again, <laughs> he works for the party who has been actively going against our faith, going against our families, and has kept us on the bottom pile for so long. Mandate. Sup team, welcome to another episode of Mandate, where we talk about anything and everything and nothing is off the table. Today is um, is episode five and we have a special guest, but before we introduce our special guest, we just want to um, do a quick shout out to the team behind the scenes. Um, a lot of the times um, people see me and Mad Messenger in the front, but um, there's a collective of us that really really make this this show work and um we just want to shout out to um one of our awesome team members um Soli, um who just had baby on mm. tuesday after Aww. she did all our production work and her husband um helping her get through it and he's here tonight so give it up for brad and Soli. yes brad and Soli. congratulations Soli. congrats and brad and they're gonna call baby mandate so shout out to baby mandate <laughs> and uh <laughs> and we want to shout out to our other um member caroline who does a lot of the work behind the scenes too and so i'm co-hosting with betia wilson aka mad messenger and jamin busby um he just walked off the street, <laughs> off the street. <laughs> i'm just here <laughs> he's representing the people and we like to pride ourselves as a podcast that's for the people by the people mm -hmm. and so we are really fortunate tonight to have our special guest Elliot Ikile um, all the way from South Auckland um, I think yeah. <laughs> but he's gonna introduce himself <laughs> and so let's give it up for Elliot thank you so much for having me on board yeah yeah no, but Probably been living Southside for the last 10 years. Uh, we just shifted over to Flatbush, actually. So we've been yes. over in Papakura for, for most of it. But I uh, love it. Uh, it probably represent uh, uh, East Side, I suppose. So I grew up over in uh, GI and Port England. So. Cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nice. <laughs> Shout out. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Hey, thank you once again, I'm Elliot, for, for coming on, on the podcast tonight. Um, obviously... You're probably our, our first um, politician. Or, or are you, would you still consider yourself a politician oh, or a former politician? Sad to hear so. I'd say... Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. No, no, in terms of... Um, oh, yeah. You're probably, yes. I've never, I've never functioned as a politician. So oh, I've never been wow, paid wow, as a politician. Wow. Uh, there's been different areas that I've been paid in around politics, but uh, I like to call myself a youth worker, even, oh, though, yes. even though, to be fair... <laughs> That's yeah. That's something I've been off the tools for a while on that one. Oh, awesome! Well, well give us a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a teaser. Not a teaser, but a, a bit of a background of, in terms of your story, in terms of how from like from from the beginning, youth work, um, and then getting into to politics, and also mm. uh, the media. Now you, you're kind of uh, mm. doing the, the the kind of the media kind of guru. I guess you could say. Um, uh, in this time uh, and age, in terms of what, what you're doing right now. So if you can give us a bit of a backdrop, mm. that'd be cool. Yeah, cool. So you, I, I suppose early on in my life, you know, raised up in metal, multiple broken homes and had issues with drugs and alcohol, you know, something which many of our, our young people sort of go through. It became saved in my 20s. Uh, as soon as I hit the 20s, uh, or as soon as I got saved, then I sort of fell into youth work. So I started uh, noticing a couple of things with some of the young people, uh, was correct in that, and then it sort of grew from there. So I became involved in various youth groups, uh, advising some, and then it turned into a job. So then I was doing uh, youth mentoring, counselling, and then I ran Behaviour Mod Unit, worked with some uh, mentoring programmes, and just trailed on through. It was really, really awesome. Probably around about 10-ish years ago, I noticed that we weren't actually winning the overall war, I suppose, for the hearts and minds of our young people. The depravity was, is increasing, the violence was escalating. We weren't actually, for every one that we saved, it seemed like we'd turn around and then three more would be mm. engaging in some horrific things on the street. So I, I, it was just frustrating to me as to why it was. At this time, I was very much a Labour supporter because, you know, we're Pacifica and so we just raise up to vote red. Uh, when I look back into the families I was dealing with, almost all of them come from broken homes and almost all of them come from fatherless homes. 
So those were some two interesting dynamics that I saw. So I went back and I had a look at, oh, okay, right, well, it looks like it's broken homes, not so much skin colour or, or colonisation or whatever. Then when I looked back into the history, I, I decided to have a look at, well, where are the families breaking down? And I looked back and I, at the time, I assumed, oh, you know, 1840 and then fast forward to some of the policies at the, the what I thought was racist policy at the time, then we look at 1900s. But families were actually pretty strong all the way up, even through Māori urbanisation. It wasn't until you got to around about the late 70s, 80s, where families actually started to break down hardcore for Māori. Pacifica are starting to break down, but Māori are a good control group because they are their families are quite broken down quite a lot. So, But the, the Māori family was strong in the late 70s, early 80s. That's when it started to break down. An interesting statistic would be that if you were born as a Māori in the 70s, late 70s, you had an 80% chance of being born to a married mum and dad. Mm. 80%. As of right now, uh, as of a few years ago, it is 20%. So it's gone from 80% down to 20%. All right? And whatever anyone wants to say about marriage, the fact is, is that a contractually obligated biological parents coupling of a child, uh, statistically they raise that child to be stronger, having more positive decision makings, better friends, uh, less likely to engage in jail behaviour, less likely to engage in antisocial behaviour. If you're married, wow. you just you do a better job for your kids, statistically speaking, that's just wow. how it is. So when I discovered those elements, then I went back and thought, well, shucks, well, why? Why isn't it evil white people? Or why isn't it uh, when Māori move from the country to the city? And at that point, when you look at 1974, a certain policy came out that was probably well-meaning at the time, and that was the Domestic Purposes Benefit, mm. or the DPB. Mm. And DPB probably, I think, was well-intentioned, but what, it, what happened after the DPB was first installed, it became easier and easier to access, mm. and they made it easier, and in, in a sense, it was actually, I don't, I don't think it was targeted necessarily, but it was very much made easier for our Māori to grab a hold of it. What that did is it subsidised single parenthood. And so suddenly you had, no, nah, I don't need no man, I can just carry my own way forward, I can do whatever. You know, So you, you started to have a generation of kids who were being raised by single mums. And as the benefit system became easier and easier to, to apply for and to gain access to, that's where we saw the families breaking down more and more and more. Uh, to the point where, for example, uh, a girl I went out with uh, 20 years ago, a girl I went out with, she had two kids uh, and she only worked 10 hours a week. If she worked more, she'd lose something like $7,000 straight off the bat and it would increase, she'd lose more money as it was. So we found that benefits were actually starting to damage even her, her desire and her ability to gain full-time enjoyment and, and to gain together. If she had a man, those benefits would go. And so what we saw in the 70s was a well-meaning benefit that expanded and purported, and what it's actually done is it has subsidised single parenthood families. And from the single parenthood families, there we've seen the, the young people who've come out from that are angry, very much focus on finding something to be raging against uh, or that they've had such amount of self-esteem issues that they don't know quite where to aim it or focus it. And then from that, that's where we get a lot of our drama. And I think I think what we've seen now is what Thomas Sowell said. Thomas Sowell is the black guy who was mm -hmm. born in the Jim Crow laws. And he said, the black family has survived centuries of slavery, generations of Jim Crow law, but has disintegrated in the wake of the liberals' expansion of the welfare state. Mm. Welfare dependency is destroying our families. Wow. It's destroyed the Māori family, and now it's coming for the Pacifica family. Now we're seeing that, and from that will come what we are seeing on the streets. Wow, that's interesting. Um, that's really this, this <laughs> some amazing information, um, Elliot. And I tell you, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying in terms of welfare in the states with the, with the black or the african-american communities um in the, in the 60s and so for the for our viewers and for the men who are watching this and some of, and some of the men who may be watching this earlier 
um, maybe that may come from single um, single parent homes. Mm. And so, what could be? And, and so, some of them will be thinking, hey, "Well, I can relate to that. I can mm. relate to you know, just just mom being in, in you know, mom's the only 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 person in the household and and the, and the struggle." And so, how do we? Uh, and there's some great stats, but how do we kind of rectify that? What do you think? What are some of the thoughts in terms of rectifying that fatherless um, man, man who's, who's raised, raised up first, a, a first single is, parent? Well, first is a, is a very big awareness and acceptance that we have to have is that, is that the kids need the men. The, from ages about zero to three, mum is pretty much everything. Dad is nearly obsolete. He needs, needs to be around, but not for that type of element even all the way up until about eight years old. Then you've got, from around about that uh, pre-teen teen stage, from around about 11, 12 years old, all the way up to 17 years old, give or take a few months, uh, dad becomes, I, I, I don't want to say he becomes God, he does not become God, but he, he becomes pretty much everything that is necessary at that point. Uh, that teen stage for is so desperately needed for our men to uh, be there for the kids as they're growing up. Uh, and there's some, there are some neurological reasons for that, uh, but effectively that teenage stage is, is desperately needed for the fathers or the father figures to be able to come in and to uh, help those young people come out of it. In terms of what we have to do overall is you, you've, got a, you've got that whole, and it's a youth work thing, uh, intervention, prevention and management idea. The fact is for some of them, you, for some of them, it's actually a bit late in terms of the young people, and I'm talking from the young people because that's just the that's a scope that I know, but more of uh, for them, actually, it's a little bit about management. They're, they're old, and so you can offer them assistance, but they will have to take it. You can't actually change anything in their environment that will help them to choose better things. It won't happen that way. Um, what we probably need to do is first off accept that one, men are vital for our young people, that they are utterly vital for their, their kids. Um, we need to repair the family unit. Uh, when I look at a lot of the reports and the stats coming out, so I looked at, uh, what, what is it, He Waka Roimata or Dar Al Fano. when I look at some of the reports on that, you know what, what big thing that I notice is missing, that they talk about colonisation, they talk about um, inherent racism or, or at least, uh, what's the new word, um, unconscious bias, they're using a lot of these words. Mm -hmm. But in Dar al Fano, they never once mentioned Fano as being a support structure. Mm -hmm. Not once. The only there's only one time where it does appear, and that's when they just give a survey of the families of the prisoners themselves. They're the ones who said Fano, the people who wrote the report, who are the ones who are being listened to in Parliament, they did not mention Fano at all. Not once. Uh, and on the other ones they don't families almost barely mentioned. So we need to be able to uh, stand up and say that family is actually important in this. Because I'll tell you this, the reports that are going to, to Wellington that are being made into law, they are not saying family. I can tell you that because, and the reports are public. They're not hidden or anything. Mm. They are public. They are, they are specifically not stating family is a, the family, the nuclear family unit is a positive. They're not saying that. Why, why is that? Why is that, Ali? Why, why are they kind of taking the, the family out of the, uh, in terms of... Well, this is where it becomes a bit of conjecture. I've, I've got a belief. I, I think I know why, but, but this one becomes more conjecture. And my, my belief is that a lot of it comes from a bit of uh, a word that I could not have said even a few years ago, <laughs> is Marxism. I think that mm -hmm. what we're seeing is currently a, a thought that, that really should have been kicked out of the world years and years ago, but has still remained quite stubborn in its thought process. Uh, when you look at a lot of the people who are writing these reports that are being heard by Wellington and then being implemented upon law, the people who are writing the reports are also ones who are very much stuck into Marxist-style thinking, Marxist-style thought, uh, very much also involved in taxpayer-funded in institutions. They don't, they don't suffer for the consequences of their actions. This is a, another thing that Thomas Sowell said. Why are you giving decision-making power to those who, who don't pay anything for it? So if you gave something to, to Charles, yeah. you, might, you might give him some money uh, and he would do a better job with it. Why? Because he is at the front line, he suffers or he gains good things 
from direct action into that which he is dearly with, making decisions for. The people who, you're, who we're talking about who are making the implemented policies in our justice system uh, and the worst ones that are coming, uh, they, don't, they don't sit there. Uh, how many youth workers do you know in, in Parliament? How many? How many? I don't think there's any. Um, yeah, there's any. Um, but, but before you carry on, um, Elliot, if you could explain to some of the men, some of the viewers, what is what is Marxism? So Marxism is so Karl Marx is a guy who, uh, while he was chilling out over in Britain many many years ago, he thought mm. up these cool ideas which would basically give everyone everything. So the the, the good feel vibes of saying that hey, if you need some money, then we'll just give you some money. The, the idea is that everything would be equal. Everything would be looked after that the the government would look after you in every which way and the idea of it is, so you look at uh, some of the more popular thoughts socialism fascism and communism those are all marxist ideas or or that they originated from marx marx himself uh, and so the idea is is that overall with those big three ones you work all of your resources go to the government the government turns around and then gives them out doles them out to you how they think that you should be failed fit now the idea might sound nice <laughs> but the problem is if you're working for mcdonald's or i've worked for mcdonald's in theory you would then get the same amount as a neurosurgeon mm. so if you look at uh, I, let's take a socialist kind of cuba cuba's a really great example i suppose because cuba is a socialist nation and what that is is that you will you will have fine doctors who get pretty much the same sort of stuff as the bartender, mm. right? And, but you have a look at it, it, it has never worked in the history of mankind. I was just about to ask, has that ever worked? Yeah, yeah. No. great question, never. Wow. It has never worked. The closest that some of the leftists who I, who I have warm discussions with, they sometimes try to bring up Scandinavia. Scandinavia is false. That is not a socialist country or socialist collection of countries. And they dabbled in it in the 70s, and they quickly got rid of it real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Mm. So socialism doesn't work. It is capitalism, and very specifically Western-style capitalism, that works the greatest for pulling people out of poverty and giving them choice and a hold of their own destiny. Wow. Wow. Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> clear. Like, it's clear. Like, like, <laughs> no, no, straight up the gut, straight up the gut. Um. No, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot to process. Um, I think a lot of what you've just said would really f first is probably new information for a lot of people, especially mm. when you talk about there's that new law that happened. Oh, with the rollout of um, I guess the doll, mm. and then how that's really affected the family unit. I think that might be a, a <laughs> that will challenge a lot of people. Like, oh, is that the reason why you know? a lot of broken families i know now i'm thinking about it there'll probably be a reason why a lot of <laughs> i know our pacifico families would have had to pretend that they were separated so they could get the mm. door from both mm. sides and yeah. and then yeah yeah so it's, a, it's quite a um pacifica yeah. haven't been as damaged as, yet yeah and if you, because if you have a look at it, our family, I, and I'm just going to go off my head here, so I might be wrong on these figures, is Pacifica are still in the mid 70s in terms of families keeping together. And you can see it in our success rate in other areas of avenue. The reason why Māori as a people group make a good analysis, analysis tool is because they're very much, you, you, they're numbered easily uh, and you can have a there's a longer track history mm. of it for example you know world war one yeah it had pacifica soldiers but there were very few uh, world war two had a few more uh, and then of course after the war with the labor desires coming in it's a it's a bit more of a messier number line mm -hmm. if, it, if that makes sense mm. uh, so maori make a good comparison plus again you know the things like 80 uh, loss of 60 percent uh, uh family habitation uh, style, it's it's a much easier way to see what comes out. I mean, the fact is, so when I was working for SIFS, uh, we, we all knew the number one, the number one young uh, young person demographic is Māori. The, what is it, 50, 54% of our prisons are Māori. Mm. 
Mm. So there's a real big question there. Is it evil white man? Is it because of colonisation? Mm. Is it because of that? Uh, uh, because the fact is we throw millions of dollars and we implement policies towards it. And if they're wrong, you're not just, uh, oh, whoops, it's not a case of that. Mm. If you get it wrong, or if you get it r- incredibly wrong, then you are doing two things. One, you are you are damaging the ability of these people to assist themselves into uh, coming out and having a better life after. And the other part is you're you're ignoring the core issues. Mm. And if you're not ignoring core issues, that doesn't go away. That just multiplies mm. as those groups multiply. What do you say to those who? Maybe watching the oh man, this guy's just saying, nah, this is I disagree wholeheartedly with this guy. <laughs> no, 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 this is that's wrong what he's saying. And there probably will be um Elliot. And you oh, and, yeah. and, and you're accustomed to that. You you yeah. you're used to people being quite controversial. But what would you say to those who said, No, no, that's those stats maybe they don't align to what my experience Because yeah. yeah, yeah, some people think, Oh, no, you you you, you can shoot your stats, <laughs> but I've experienced it, I've done, I've seen oh, it with my own eyes, I've seen it face to face. So what, how do you, what do you say to those kind of so, men out, out there, or people out there in general? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's fascinating you should say that because I, I've just had a few, I've had a few experiences that have led me to to sort of have to really face up to something that I don't want to face up to, which is, I think, and, and you know, this is a mandate, so there's a, there's a strong Pacific uh, focus here. Um, like I said, I, I used to be a Labour supporter heart, and then I when I looked at the facts and figures and I realised that the policies that Labour are making are hurting our families, it took me quite a while. I went through denial stage. I believe, nah, man, you know, Labour's still good. I didn't actually have a reason for it, but, I, you know, Labour, Labour are good people. Uh, it wasn't until the Dawn Raids idea or the Dawn Raids facts that actually sort of blew it away. So with the Dawn Raids, of course, we know, well, some of us know that Labour started the Dawn Raids, then National took it over. It took me a couple of years before I would even accept that and realise that actually it was a Labour thing that they wanted to do. Anyway, fast forward to even just in the last holidays uh, with some family who I absolutely love and still love, you know, no problem. Uh, we were sitting there talking and I, I was just putting to them, okay, well, great, you know, you want to, you want to talk about, oh, because I had my Trump hat on. And <laughs> <laughs> Which we will talk about later. Good <laughs> <laughs> <An> icebreaker. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. 24. <laughs> and, uh, so we were talking there and then he said, uh, you know, and then we were talking about, uh, and I said, oh, okay, well, because that was me. What about the dawn rates? So who started the dawn rates? He said, well, who made them worse? I said, oh, yeah, I, National Party. So who started the dawn rates? Who started them first? And this went back and forth for quite a, I, I'm literally, I mean, maybe about a dozen times. And, and at that point, I realised that this person who I love so much they actually struggle, they are Pacifica, of, of course, they psychologically struggle to even be able to put just the Labour Party yeah, yeah. Mm. with yeah. anything negative. Yeah. And and yeah. then it drew me, and then I had to talk with some of the other guys, uh, even even a Fifiel who I won't mention. They oh, come on, come on. <laughs> 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 do, 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 do. <laughs> you know you are. <laughs> afterwards, afterwards, afterwards. So uh, they they really do. They really they are unable at this point to attach the Labour Party name with these other elements. And, and why is it important? It's important because if you cannot extricate yourself from the allegiance to a group who who put law into place and put all the policies into place and and I'm sorry, but also also the reasons to why our people are some of the lowest social stats constantly. If we can't extricate ourselves from that and, and say, you guys are hurting our people and you guys are keeping us down, and, and if we can't do that, then what do we do? Then we're looking at a psychological issue mm. because that's what it is. Mm. Pacific are the only group who vote for Labour. Mm. Mm. Maori independent. They choose the Palangi, same, you know, in all the other groups. They will choose who they go for. They have leanings, absolutely. But only Pacifica will just mass vote. Wow. Uh, and that's, I think, something which which uh, uh, needs to be brought out. But, yeah, I would say that for the for the men, for the brothers out there, we you're f- you lead your family, even if you are solo parent, even if you are uh, on the other side and you're battling to get time with your kids or something like that, you, you lead your family. Uh, even if even if they tell you you don't, uh, your children look up to you and you are the leader. Yeah. 
sounds like we're being conditioned that way. Mm. I think, yeah, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I mean, because I, I, I'm the equivalent of an Afghasi, you know, mm. I'm also born here. My nan came over and she, tells me, she told me uh, before she passed that that uh, she got out of there. Um, I don't want to say too much as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, oh, good. But she was a rebel, as in she was a rebel uh, in Niue. Mm. And, and so that's part of what brought her mm. out. Um, so I don't know whether it's a I, – I, I want to know the reason why. Yeah. I'd, I've got hypothesis, mm. but I don't know why. I'll be honest, uh, I've I've voted blindly for Labour in the past because my parents voted for them and it's this yeah. whole, I, I don't know enough about politics to make an informed decision or to even know where to dissect allegiances and policies and all that sort of stuff. It's just been, you go through the motions of work and school and all that sort of stuff that busies you and so I haven't bothered to look up and look at what might be different. It's, it's one of those like you pick the devil you know versus the devil you don't. Yeah. What's your electorate? Um, so I'm in Otara. So Otara. So who's your MP? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell you. So it's Ginny Salesa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what has she done for the people of Otara? Couldn't tell you. That's how uninvolved I am oh. in the community. I how much? Uh, how much improvement has been done to the town centre? There's some improvement. OKV, shout out. But other yeah. than that, OKV, yeah. I couldn't tell you anything else. Okay, I'm, not, I'm not out of the house enough to, to do off the government. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was run community? by the people community. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I couldn't yeah. tell you. I don't know where the influence, whether I see it. Maybe I do, and yeah, maybe it's there, and I just don't see it. But I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And Otara still remains one of the more crime areas. Still remains one of the main areas utilized for prospects. Still, mm. I mean, I did my training there for SIFS. Mm. Uh, so I, you know, and I. But if you look at the areas where labour controls, how good are those environments? Mm. Has there been an improvement? You know, manurewa, maangere, maangere, you know, what's the improvement? Oh. 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 They've got a new cycle lanes. <laughs> yeah, 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 they do. That's right. <laughs> they got new cycle lanes. And isn't that, isn't that a perfect example of how it gets used? Yeah. Uh, why does Margaret in these cycle lanes? Ain't no one going up on the, and besides which the the, yeah. the people we see on the cycle they don't need cycle lanes. <laughs> they roll up on there, they go down to Timor Nui Akiwa, they, they'll go wherever. They don't need no cycle lanes. But that's a good example of it. Where do you put it? Mm. Where they won't kick up a stink. New neoliberalism. Neoliberalism, mm. many people don't like neoliberalism. I think it, it something like that probably had to be done, but not that harsh. But neoliberalism. Do you know where neoliberalism first started? Yeah, well. Educate us. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, well. Jim Bolger days. Before? Just before. Okay. Sort I just of want to sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> it was war, so smart. It was war. Right on the money. Uh, he's close. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Manurewa. What? That came from Manurewa. Mm. All right, so Manurewa voted for the person who went hard for neoliberalism. Not once. But twice. What's his name again? Uh, that would have been uh, Roger Douglas. Oh, sorry. Roger, yeah, Roger Nomics. Douglas. Roger Nomics. Roger, oh, Roger Nomics. Wow. So everyone knows, everyone in politics knows, if you are in Otara or Manirewa or Mangere or one of these sorts of areas, you don't have to do anything. The people will sit there and obey, and you can do whatever you want. Uh, uh, Al Pito. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, he's a... Was he a five feet high minister? <laughs> hey, good he wears it. Are you a five tanga in the You know? Tell me, what's he done for the Pacifica people? What's wow. he done for any of the people of Margaret? Mm. Comment Ooh. on the comment on that <laughs> section. That looks, if you know good, good, if then. you know, because uh, I'm not from Mangere. <laughs> and uh, Do you also, know him? what has he done for you? <laughs> yeah. That's all yeah. What has he done for you? And by the way, also Mangere, uh, because of their representative, their representative, sweet. So their Mangere apparently agrees with killing a an unborn baby mm, mm. up to and including birth full term eh? full wow. term and including during birth wow. and not only that don't forget Margaret, their representative uh, so therefore Margaret has also blocked uh, a an attempt to say if a baby is born during an abortion attempt then the doctors must give that baby uh, a life-saving medication Margaret blocked it or rather, Margaret's representative blocked it. Wow. 
Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, uh, old Beatles not here to defend himself. And now, and, and yeah, hey, oh, I've given him calls. All, all good, all good. <laughs> but, but I love how you've put the accountability on the people because oh, it's the wow. people that voted yep. them in it. Mm. So it's yeah, he may be yo that that changes my like perspective, my perspective yeah. around yeah. who we put in because <clears throat> yeah, they might represent us. Oh, they represent us. So that means that's our vote. Yes, oh. yours. Yeah, you voted for that. Wow. So think about the fact that we are generally this uh, Pacifica, generally the second, uh, second to the bottom of school, uh, second to the bottom of pretty much everything. The one that we're lowest on in social uh, sets is overcrowding in houses. Mm. So again, all of these people that that we have put in power, that you have put in power, what have they done? And and just. Not, it's not a new thing. This goes on and on. Wow, and I think I think for the viewers, the men who are watching this, and it might be really enlightening. Um, Elliot, I mean, oh man, I didn't. This is new information for me or for them. But um, I'm just wondering how how important because you're, you're well versed in, in the politics. But how important for the average Joe to say, hey, I need to understand what's happening in my community. I need to understand what's happening in the politics. How important is it for and more so the men? How is it, how important is it for us to say, hey? I need to be up to speed with what's happening, because uh, it sounds like man, there's a lot of things like whoa. It's everything. It's 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 why we it's why we're suffering so much now, and why we're about to suffer even more so, is because of the the rules that get put in place. It's because that's effectively what it is. It's not about politics. It's about the rules to your day to day. How much money you make, and what jobs you can go for, uh, bringing the the your family your hangover, going over there. Mm. All of the rules that get put in place get put in place in Wellington. All of that happens because of the people that we put into charge. We and I think this is actually a big thing about. I am I am a bit old school. I think that there has been an assault on masculinity mm. for about a decade, or probably a bit longer than that. But it's only been really taking a good strong effect for about. A decade, and the men out there need to realise that they are desperately needed. But they need we need our men out there to be equipped with understanding what's going on, because also as men we have a we tend to be like that, mm. you know. Give us the rules of the game, let us, and then we fight and fight hard. That's what we need. We need men men of verb, and we need men of strength, of character and courage. Mm. Uh, and that's I think that's that's what we really do need. And even those men who feel like they are not able to do many things, there are other there are areas out there where they can put in their strength, and then that can help to change our destinies, the Pacifica destiny. It is it's needed that we need our men to stand up and stand forward for wow, it. Wow, wow. Uh, Frank Hicks is a good example. You know, I think Frank Hicks is a guy who uh, supports solo parents going through the family court process. It's a oh. horrific horrific thing that is uh, and he is, a, he is a man who is there and he helps to focus that strength gives the rules of the games and allows you to fight in that area because we're, we're men the fact is we want to fight mm. you know mm-hmm. and, and we need to have a focus and we need to have a strength and we need to uh, in a sense be given the allowance to you know, I, I can't think of any greater allowance than taking a hold of the destiny of our people and our families and what's your obs- <laughs> what's your ob- observation um elliot like w- w- in terms of the men in, in this generation or even past generations, what's your observation of, of our men of today? What, what do you what do you see out there in terms of? Uh, do you see a lot of mana or strength, or or is it a bit of a mixed bag? Or do you see like man, we're kind of it's a bit of a, a, a downfall. What do you what do you what do you what are you? What are you this, this is just feeling? coming from what I what I'm seeing, and it does depend generation to generation. I think I think mm. there's a lot of uh, I think there are a lot of weak men uh, mm. coming up being raised. Mm. Uh, and I think that's that's going to be a big problem within the next 10, 15 years. I think we've got a an incredible saturation of porn yeah. that has an entire generation of young men absolutely, uh, totally oblivious to what it means to be a man and to have that relationship aspect and to even down to the physical attractions and all the drama there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you've got uh, the the very effective. Mm, War on masculinity. Uh, if you have a look now, and, and my but my data comes from around about three, four years ago. Uh, three, four years ago, uh, uh, over two thirds of all suspensions and uh, expulsions at schools were male. Uh, so you've also got kids there who are being 
and and I've looked at some of them. Some of them are not. Uh, they'll be rambunctious, and they they should be, you know, uh, non non physical whack whacked <laughs> with a with a type mm. of punishment. But they should not be expelled. They've been. Uh, you've got. Uh, there's a lot that I could say about the schooling systems, uh, but you've got some severe issues in regards to that. You've got the 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 fact that, um, uh, you know, what, what's the mantra? Uh, we've got a feminism now that is no longer about equality. Now it is about superiority over males, and mm. therefore males are not just worthless, they could be toxic in, in anything where a man exudes any type of strength or character of strength, then he's seen as toxic and, and that needs to be shut down. So I think that there's a there's a there's an absolute effective war against masculinity right now. Um, so I'd I'd say that being aware that as a man uh, uh, we are under threat. It is a war worth fighting, and we can win it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably a, a good way of looking at it. It's not a case of that's it. You know the the, the leftists have come and they're going to take mm-hmm. you down, oppress you, and mm-hmm. you're nothing. You shut up. You sit in the corner. They will try that, but I think it's, it's it's about being brave enough to be able to stand up and to say no, get stuffed. You know, I'm a man. Yeah, I love being a man. You know, and, and this is the way it yeah. should be. Yeah. <laughs> How do we do that in a day and age where we felt um, looking like we're being overpowering or intimidating? You're going to look like that anyway. Mm. You're going to look like that anyway, so just do it. Yeah. That's what mm. I'd say. Because you, you would have experienced a lot of that. You would have experienced a lot of the um, backlash, um, Elliot. Yep. So, yeah, so well, give us an example. How, how did you deal with it? Like, how do you deal with the. When you kind of out there, you because like you said, you're quite controversial. You, you know, we'll talk about the other thing on, on the on the Herald, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, in terms of um, how do you, how did you? Is it for you like oh, it's just a what of of a duck's back, or you just kind of just bust through? Know what you're talking about. I think is is a good mm. one. Yeah, you you've got to know what you're talking about. So if they if they come to you, uh, and so I'm and I'm also I'm open to being wrong. You know, if, mm. if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong about Alberto, sweet. Yeah. Let's come and just have Talanoi. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Sweet is, it's, I think it's probably a big one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I might be wrong. The other one is just know what you're talking about. So yeah. I did have one where I was in a justice argument or justice debate. Uh, then they were the, We had the alphabet, had a lot of the alphabet people there, and then they were basically pushing, saying um, something like, uh, oh, how dare you, uh, LGBTQIA+. Plus, uh, kids, the parents do better and the kids do better and things like that. And, and I was able to say that that's come from literally one study that got mocked as soon as it came out and I gave them the details of it and they got very angry at that. But So you've got to first off be aware that you might be there. And I think as a Christian it really helps. We're all flawed, <laughs> we're all cracked jars of clay, we all suck. Uh, uh, so an awareness of that really helps as well as know what you're talking about. Uh, and, uh, and I think once you've got those passes uh, to play, the other Christian element then comes into play after that, which is we all did. You know, I think we've, we've died, and we have died. We died in our sins, and then we've been risen up. But, and I said it actually on the last one, which I didn't realise I said it until after, which is don't be so afraid of losing your life. Uh, don't be so afraid That's of right. losing your life that uh, you become weak in it or something like that. Well, anyway, what I mean is just do it. Just, mm. you know, you will be afraid and you'll be slaughtered and you'll be cut down. I've been called coon, uh, uh, race traitor, um, Uncle Tom. I've been called quite a few sort of things, you know. <laughs> and it's funny, one of them uh, who was yelling it was a hard, was a balangi, hard balangi. So in response, I started to reply back to his question that he put before, uh, into the Maori and the... Uh, you know, it, it, these sorts of, of fun bits you can have in them as well. Mm. But I would say, I would say, know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. Be prepared to be wrong um, and lose yourself to it. Mm. You know, that, that's the mm. way to go. Yeah, I have sure. no, I want to die when I'm a, a grandfather, <laughs> great grandfather. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, am, I am aware and I have accepted uh, very reluctantly that, that uh, something may come that. I'll yeah. have to <laughs> give up my family here. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, um, you know, Pete, 
has often just in this interview reiterated what you're seen as from the outside in terms of being controversial how does that make you feel like like speaking to you now it's like why is it controversial yeah why me why me how does it make you feel uh, uh, yeah like like what you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's weird it's like family unit mum mm. dad kids controversial. All, yes. <laughs> why is this all controversial wow. there's always this little bit of uh, confusion yeah mm. I, but I sometimes I just <laughs> I just sort of crack up now and just yeah. go with it but but you're, you you raise a real good point why is it controversial yeah yeah mm. and it's funny because I you know um, I don't know you personally and 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 if I just did a quick study on who you are that that'll be the thing that stands out and then now sitting down with you and having this total no, I'm like, hey, well, look how far we've come in terms of a society where what you're standing up for um, is deemed controversial. Well, see, mm. that's me. Mm. That's cool. And the other thing was like, um, in terms of all the backlash you're getting and all these names, how does that make you feel like mentally? Like, is there times where it's like you're in the mirror and you're going, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, the the um, well, you guys would you guys would understand this. Uh, they don't, they don't quite understand yeah. that. Uh, you know, when you're trying to mock and instead of winning, then it's like, okay, shh, come, come. It's yeah. all good. If they if they think they can come with me first, then okay, well, whatever. I don't want to, but yeah, well, let's go. Let's just, just dance, as sweet as. If they want to come with me with facts and they lose, well, sweet as then as well. It's there's there's an element of fun. Cool. You you do have to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, you do have to enjoy it. And uh, l- what comes out is that you have a strong identity of who you are, mm. you know, mm. your mandate, yeah. mm. and um and and it's a really encouraging also. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm curious. Um, it's awesome hearing just things that um are taken for granted, and it's already made me reconsider my position on certain things and just think more critically. Um, but I'm curious. I, I heard a story about how you. Um, found a pastor uh, who was an ex-gang member in your mid-twenties. Um, and I was a little bit curious because it seems like um, your resilience and things are, are sort of tied back to aspects of your faith. And so I was a little bit curious about your journey with your faith mm-hmm. and a little bit more about the story that I'd, I'd read about. Yeah, the only reason why I am the way I am now is because of God and and joining the Christian faith. Uh, so yeah, up until... Up until Christianity, I was quite aimless. Uh, <laughs> nothing like what I am now, where there's, there's a bit more of a parameter. Basically, I just hooked up with whoever, and there were there were reputations about me and all that sort of buzz. <laughs> and basically, I just sat down and smoked weed and, uh, oh yeah, heroin and rush and a little bit of class A's, ketamine, and uh, you know, all, some of the other bits and pieces. And uh, But very aimless, just aimless, nothing going anywhere. When I became saved, uh, yeah, you know, God gave me a very direct sense of purpose, uh, and and not only that, I probably did have some very decent anger issues just deep within me, which probably stemmed from elements of broken home. You know, was it my fault? Yeah. Losing some of those elements there, uh, and gave me a, a, a there was a focus point that I had. I think that identity in Christ is really what sort of led it to me. So. You know, I've been burned from a couple of churches, uh, but I still love them. And, and there's all those things that are human. Mm-hmm. We still have that. But the faith aspect, um, you know, um, stories of when we could still smoke in restaurants, I would have I'd have my big fat life application Bible, a uh, bottle of sake, <laughs> and then I'd have my ashtray. No, sorry, bottle of sake, then I'd have my ashtray. And I'd <laughs> reading the Bible read. and, <laughs> you know, going hard. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, I read the Bible like someone like... Uh, uh, so twice or three times in the first year of me being saved. Um, but then after that, you know, again, that, that hardcore parameter focus and light and, and just gunned it after that. Mm. I think that's where my identity was. But you, you're absolutely mm. right. Your identity is so, mm. so important. And I think that's also where we, we uh, I think a lot of our Māori whanau struggle a lot because sometimes they they don't, they literally don't know who their father is at all, as in there's no knowledge of it, Not not that... Oh, he was a guy from uh, Tuhoi, and he was back there, or something like that, and that was it. Some of the some of the ones who I work with have no idea who their father is, and the mother won't tell them. And sometimes the mother themselves don't want to have a bar of it, and you know they might know within the first few streets around where they live. 
nothing outside of there. Uh, uh, it's so your identity. You've got to find your identity uh, where you can, um, and I think that's really important, especially for a man. We need mm. to have. We need to find our identity somewhere. Now, I, I do. I think that God is actually the number one by far, and I'll say that. But uh, you, you find what it is for you, I suppose. Wow. Mm. And just like going off of what Charles was saying, um, Elliot, I think there's a lot of men who probably think the the way in terms of. Uh, your your thoughts in are probably too timid or a bit scared to to voice uh, their opinions, mm. and so uh, what do you say to the, to those men? Because you, and, you, and you already said, hey, know what you're talking about. You know, uh, don't be pr- don't be proud enough to don't, don't be too proud to say, hey, I'm wrong, got it wrong, um, and just and just, just and just do it. And there, but there may be some guys who are watching this, like, man, I, I totally agree with what he's saying, but um, but if I ruffle some feathers, you know, I'm, I might just get myself into trouble it makes the, you gun shy a little yeah. bit, eh? like sometimes when the stakes are highest at least i feel like uh, you know you've been in that position where mm. you want to there's so many things you want to do but because you have family or you think about the stakes too much you get a bit gun shy and so you, you have a voice and you really want to say it but you can't quite mm. get yourself to that point yeah no you're right you're right a- a- and and i've lost yeah, it would be wrong for me to say, ah, oh, no, it'll be a wonderful battle and it's all be good. No, nah, man, there's scars. Yeah. There's scars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are scars. Uh, you know, there, there's even a scar that I can't even tell you about. You know, there's uh, um, uh, those who know, they are allowed to know, mm. uh, but uh, there's, a, there's a particular scar that, that by law I'm not allowed to be able to talk about, but that was oof, very painful as well. Mm. Uh, I mean, and, and it does. It does cause damage. Uh, I'm only now... Um, and being able to fix a lot of the stuff, some of the damage that I've done just by being out there in the fight. Uh, that's with my whānau. So that is something that, that each person has to really consider what they can do. Interestingly enough, the more who take up that fight, it means that the the, the more that, that responsibility, that, that the struggle comes off us. Mm. You know, and uh, one thing I can say is, yeah, man, I've been wrong heaps. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. oh man, sometimes I'll go home, you know, in front of like a, a thousand different uni students, and they all got to see me owned. And <laughs> you know, <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> but you learn, you learn, yeah. you feel the pain, you get up, and you carry on. And I think that's yeah. the big one. If yeah. when you get up, you carry on. Mm. Uh, oof, you know, you you feel better for it. You, I have to say, if not for my stuff ups yesterday, I would not be as strong as I am today. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Because I was going to yeah. ask you, like, that whole process, that thought process and mental process around, you know, you're out there trying to shoot your shot and then things don't go the way you want it to go. And just what does that roller coaster look like? And then trying to come out of it or encouraging, yeah. you know, all of us, mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, hard. Oh, big time. Yeah, no, because we, we all lose. Yeah. Where we lose. Uh, you know, I remember uh, reading about Michael Jordan, you know, you think about Michael Jordan, what did he say? He said something like, uh, uh, you know, man. oh man, how can you keep on shooting all those awesome shots? Mm. Oh, I'm making the awesome shots is because, oh, well, because I missed all the ones in practice. Mm. You know, the, in the, the, you will lose. And, and it's knowing that you're going to lose because every time you lose, that gives you a chance to learn and also to gain resilience. Mm. This, and this is actually gets a bit controversial because I, I'm one of those people who, and I love uh, John Kerwin, I absolutely respect him. I don't think you can teach resilience. Mm. And I know that's a controversial thing. I, there are some people who say, well, we can teach mm. you resilience. I don't believe you can. I believe that resilience only gains is gained through... Uh, uh, the fire. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. Going, going <laughs> through pain. <laughs> going through pain and, and failing and feeling like crap. Because when it's you come good. out of it, you've developed this small little shell bit and then every other mm. time you do now there's an argument we made said oh you shouldn't be brittle no 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 you need that part there there are coping mechanisms whether you you know go watch rugby you smash a, a, a punching bag whatever those are coping mechanisms but you also need that resilience factor mm. so that you can still keep building it up and a good one is you know you're all going to, we're all going to have trauma and, and absolute pain in our lives when when my mum passed away, you know, I was the one who was there and no one else was there and I slept with the body and, uh, you know, I was there along the way, all the doing that stuff. It was, a, it was the resilience that I'd gained from other elements before that that allowed me to still function in the way that I needed to function. Mm. And then allowing that coping mechanism or that grief to be able to take care of those other elements. And, and, and this is actually also something that I'd say, men, 
we 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 must be allowed to gain our resilience. Love that. Because the fact is that it's when good, the man. painful things come to, whether like it or not, we're the ones who get looked at, and we're built. We are built that way. And I guess it's awesome. you. Yeah. Sorry, no, 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 I was just, yeah, I was just thinking because you know we got a lot of young people like we're living in a day and age where our young people go through things, and when they go through like, maybe the little thing, and then they have this like this apparently this high stats of um, mental health with our young people Depression. and yeah, and the level of resilience is not there, and I think and just hearing your. Your korero, what, what we're talking about is like, because we, our generation are protecting our kids from mm. a lot of the stuff that we they want them to go through. So they're not going through certain um, hardships, hardships that we went through. So we're protecting them. But when they do go through something outside of our protection, it's hard for them to deal with. Mm. And mm. Yeah, so it's cool just hearing what you're saying. I guess there's... Like a continuum or level in terms of there is um, yeah like yeah, balance, too, yeah, 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 balance yeah, yeah, like yeah. if there's too much like uh, mm. crisis mm. if there's a massive mm. crisis then it'll be hard for them to build when it's out of mm. their their reach but no I love what you said too yeah, what it, I just it, said. in these other parts you know the things like uh, the old YMCA camps uh, you know where where young people would go off and they'd go off to these places and they'd have to deal with their own social interactions and then they'd have to fail at making a fire and feel bad and then they'd do it and they'd finally get it or or, or abseiling those are, are beautiful examples of where it's done mm. but you'll find that we don't really do those to- sorts of camps anymore a lot of them and, and then you've got the generation where you've got uh, you've got the extremes on both sides or not extremes but you've got one where a, a growing amount of young people who are just uh, running amok and the anti-smacking bill which actually made it so oh no if you even touch your kids and so they just run amok Anyway, then you've got the ones who are like us, who are well-meaning. So when you when you said about that, Charles, <coughs> I was reminded of my own daughter. I was, it was only like a few days ago I said, you know, when I was 10 years old, man, <laughs> I was I went to my own school. I walked straight down the, when I had to go to <laughs> yep, yep. school and I had to walk past all these cars and all that sort of thing, rolled past, you know, the, oh, headhunters over there. Yeah, we keep on going forward. That way, but she, she gets delivered to school by the wife and <laughs> and if they're w- walking over man i gotta know who the family is and i gotta talk with them and hey sh- you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. hold on yards and, and and you're absolutely right is she gonna grow up strong or what, what happens when she hits real trauma and, and wow. you know so I, I think there's a there's a valid discussion wow. in that that's a good that's a good point i think uh, I, for, i'm speaking on, on my own experience um brothers because yeah, it's um, like you were saying, Charles, you don't want your kids to go through that kind of trauma or trauma or or hardship. And so we kind of, we think we're doing, or I'm speaking for myself, I think I'm doing a service, mm. a good service to, to to my kids. Oh, no, you don't have to do this. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do your lunch. I'll take you to school, all that kind of stuff. But in the long in the long run, you, you can see that what we're doing or what I'm doing is kind of, kind of cotton wool our, our kids. And, and when, like you're saying, when crap hits the fan. Mm. How, how how do they react? It's like training wheels, eh? It's like it's fine for a, a period, like to scaffold them to the next stage, um, but keeping the training wheels on for too long. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They'll never learn through it. Wow, wow. Yeah, it just look like you're breastfeeding a ten year old kid all the time. Oh man, yep. I've seen some. And like, sorry, if <laughs> anyone's <laughs> doing that, I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Besides my sorry, experience. Sorry, sorry. How do you? How do you say that? Where have I come? Where have I come to? Hey, that's the after show. <laughs> oh, but oh, but oh, man, just what, um, I just love the fact that um, Ali, you just went just handy straight from the get go, man. You just straight in there. It's just, um, but oh, what I did want to ask as well, um, Ali, the, the, the what fuels you? Because you said something about your your, your, mm. your, your background and you, you kind of lived in a, a broken home. Mm. If, if I'm, I'm correct, can you just tell us a little bit about that? As to what is that? What's one of the starting points as to why you kind of went down this road? Yeah, I think I think it was. Uh, I think it was. So, I think there was an element there where I, th- there were some things that happened to me that, that I don't want others to sort of go through. I'm mm. I'm glad for them. The regret is is an incredibly pointless exercise. There are lessons to be learned, but regret's pointless. That said, oh, there are some things where I'm like, wow, you know, I do, if I can put something in place, which means that uh, these people don't have to go through it, that would be quite awesome. <laughs> that would be good as. So I think it started that way, and then it was, then it was 
uh, and I don't, I can't explain it so much. I can only explain it that there is a faith element in there, where I look at what's going on now, and I look at the darkness that is that is the the political darkness that is covering Western culture. You know, uh, the alphabet ideologies, the socialism, and the the communism. I think New Zealand's in a little bit of a fascist. Um, environment, not the whole swastikas and long coats, mm. but fascism, the philosophy, uh, and I l- look at all of the uh, Marxist pulling downs of boy girl um, race, the race based segregation stuff, all of that sort of thing, and I think that no, we must protect the culture that we were raised in, because even though it's not a perfect culture, it was a culture that has been the greatest culture in mankind's history. That is Western culture. That is the combination of Christian po- uh, ethics values alongside Greek democracy. That's Western culture. And what we're seeing is the removal of that. Uh, I mean, a- again, another little Labour issue. Uh, Labour erased Jesus from Parliament. Mm. You know, no no other government has ever done that, ever. Uh, it was the Labour Party who did that. Uh, did you catch the Labour message for Easter? Because they did it for Ramadan, of course. Oh, yes, yeah, they're very, very, Ramadan, they were yeah. very serious and, and they were very uh, respectful, which is fine. Did, but there was no Labour message for Easter, which happens to be the most important event for the Christian uh, and is also one of New Zealand's most important holiday seasons as well. Mm. And so you're, you're, I look at it that there's, a, for myself, there's a bit of a, it started with the young people, then it moved into the families, then it moved into the overall uh, being able to hold on to destiny. Then it turned into freedom and democracy. Now it's just a, basically a, a defence of the culture um, that that has actually risen us, that has allowed us to rise up uh, if we want to. And I think that's probably what it is at the moment. Mm, man, man. Whew. This, this, uh, that's, that's some, uh, I think the, in terms of content, it's just um, some real rich conversation. Um, but also, and like I said before, um, Elliot, there'll be some guys, there'll be some people, which is all good, uh, who will totally mm. disagree. Oh, no, I want them. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I love <laughs> it. Totally yeah. disagree. So we'll probably have less followers after this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they will. They probably dis- dis- they probably disagree. So now it's, it's it's it is about colonization, because it is it is, and you know, as we do, it's in terms of the race. Uh, race relations and then also decolonization and then colonization and. So what is colonization? Yeah, well, well, that's a good thing. I think we should talk about it. I think, what is it? What is it for us, personally? Colonization. The, the, the white man has come and taken over and just... Interesting. Because, yeah. of course, part of my... I fuck up to one of the uh, warrior parts of Te Raupraha. And so that, you know, Te Raupraha, you know, he, he murdered and, and slaughtered and enslaved his way from, uh, what was it, from west to east, or east to west, uh, along the way. We even have... Uh, my part of the Raturoa Fano, and we were a part of all of that. Was that colonization? Mm. Or was it the colonization of, you know, the good one that the spin off likes to try to erase, which is the Moriori? Or was it the colonization of, of, of the British into New Zealand? Or what is the colonization that you're talking about? And, and I think this it. I think it should be um, discussed because there's a lot of people out there thinking, when they, once they hear about colonization, they think, oh, it's the white man. Yeah, white man. The white man just come over, come over in their ships, the British Empire. Hellenized, we've been Hellenized, Greek philosophy can come in, they throw their, their religion on us, missionaries, all that kind of stuff. And then they've taken over all our identity and tell us, hey, this is how it's done, this is the only way, this is the only system that we do it, and then you follow through. Which, of course, uh, the kids are about to learn starting from next year, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so and so I, I hear it all the time now, um, um, Elliot, and then people think, oh, it's colonization because of the white man. Yeah. And... And some people think, well, well, maybe that's true. And there's a lot of people, who, like you're saying, maybe have done no, no research on, on this, on, on the subject. What's it, what is actually colonization? It's like, oh, you know what? Well, well so-and-so said this. Well, so it, has to, it has to be right. You know, so-and-so said that. So, yeah, it's, it's true for me. Mm. And so what is it for us? I think it's, to be, it's a good conversation. What is it for us? Um, but more so for what are the thoughts of our, our men out there? Mm. What is it? I think I relate to some of what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know too much about it other than what I've been taught in high school. And as I'm a third year student, I'm doing a Bachelor of Education, so primary. Right. Um, <laughs> primary education, yeah. Wow. Well. At University of Auckland. So, um, <laughs> 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 yeah. okay. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I lived under a rock most of my life. So a lot of what I've been taught, I've taken as fact. And so I've come into the university and, and it's just, the feeling I get, so it might not be official, but it feels like we're being taught that 
instead of being neutral about everything, it does seem like we are being taught that this way of life or this ideology is mm. right, um, and this one isn't. So, like, I've heard of Marxism and socialism and aspects of it, and obviously, I haven't, I haven't delved too deep into it. But the idea of it, I was like, that sounds like a, a pretty reasonable idea. Who wouldn't want mm. that? Um, but. I hadn't really explored too much of the other side. And so hearing some of the critiques and maybe the knee-jerk reaction for some of the listeners might be like, I immediately disagree with it. Mm, but hearing mm. some of the perspectives um, it, it sort of made me consider that nothing's, so, nothing's absolute um, with, with what I've been taught. And I guess that's part of the life journey is to keep learning, mm. to keep you know bringing on more knowledge. So when I think about colonization, I think about exactly the things you mentioned. Um, missionaries coming over using education to civilize Maori. Um, I think of the Maori land wars and mm. you know, the, the way that their culture and the, the way of life has been has deteriorated into what it is today. Um, but again, that's what I've been taught, and so yeah. I don't know really. I'm still trying to make sense of it well, in see, my mind. And that, I think that's actually a wonderful thing is that you're talking about uh, the ideas, the concepts. Mm. Let's argue the ideas and concepts. Is where you'll find out many on the left will, will not. They will they will say that if you don't agree with us, then you are a bad person. Your mm. value system is wrong. And that, I think that's the difference between the left, or one of the differences of, between the left and the right. The left will argue in terms of values. If you don't believe me that, that a white man bad, then you are bad. You are mm. evil. There's something wrong with your value system. The right will generally go, well, let's look at the idea of it. Is it a good idea or is it not a good idea? Or is it? They'll argue the, the points of it. Extremities on both are really bad, but mm. I, I find that the left are more in power. Therefore, uh, there's an imbalance of that type of style of thinking. But so I think it's wonderful yeah, that you're like, yeah. you know, you're talking about a third wave, and you soon you're not a hardcore, no rainbow <laughs> flags all over the place or anything. Eh? But then again, Ipsum is a little bit. Well, no, no, it's still in there. <laughs> no, Ipsum's still right in there. <laughs> it sounds like um, you have a pushback towards those. Um, who have an idea of um, what colonization means to them? Well, colonization is a human process. Mm. Every single human, every single people group on this earth throughout history of mankind has blood on their hands. No one's guiltless, and no one's uh, sorry, no one's innocent at all. Um, so, so first off, colonization is a human process. Uh, iwi, hapu, you know, all various intervals there. The Pacifica groups moving in. Uh, it's all in there, even in terms of Britain. Well, you actually had Britain and Spain and Denmark and you had all of those areas all floating around. When we get into the facts of what actually happened, it's, it's a lot more nuanced. It's a lot more cooler. It's a lot mm. more cooler. I mean, you had Ngāpuhi who made their own way to Queen Victoria. It, was, it wasn't some sort of sponsored by some benevolent white man, you know, or anything like that. Ngāpuhi already had, uh, some Ngāpuhi chiefs already had uh, places that they had bought over in Australia. So they already had a rich economic trade going. Uh, the other ones who made it to Queen Victoria and then, of course, some of the discussions going on there. Uh, but I find that a, a lot of the people there, colonisation is white man bad, uh, mm. white men are guilty for everything. And, and what that means is that when you look at Te Hurihanga Nui, which you would be already taught mm. about a little bit, Te Hurihanga Nui is it, basically, it, it puts you into three categories, which is either Māori, Pākehā or Tawiwi. Like those are the three categories which are in, uh, and then w when you look into the blueprint of what they are doing, effectively, if you're a child, if you're a six, seven year old child, then you are, then you might be a Pākehā, and therefore you get encapsulated with these particular values. You were this, 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 but it's not your fault. It's just you know because your skin colour. Okay, <laughs> they don't say that, but when you look at the <laughs> curriculum that they are putting in, it's to be embedded, and as they get older and older, the out the the learning outcomes become a lot more. Uh, disgusting as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot of, uh, so you look at Te Hurihanga Nui, it effectively is uh, CRT, critical race theory, of what we see mm. over in the uh, US. Yes. And, and uh, what I am grateful for is they are pushing back now against all of that critical race theory nonsense. Uh, so I'm hoping that, that parents learn a little bit more from the US, jump into it first. But again, who writes these things uh, and where do they come from and who votes for the people who get those policies in? Mate, mate. So, so much. So much to process. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, good earlier because, because, and I'll go back to what, the, the, uh, what I said before, because some people will say, no, no, you can say all that and you can say all the stats and all that kind of stuff. But for them, they might say, hey, but, but I, I've experienced firsthand, I've seen it, um, 
I've been caught a coconut. I've done this and that. So there has to be. There has to be. Uh, would you say there's a uh, an element of truth in terms of colonization, in terms of the human process, or is it just uh, a handful? Again, I'd want to know. So let's take a, a, an example. Okay, right. So let's look at uh, one of the reasons of which they give by a conscious bio racism is in the DHBs. Mm-hmm. You know, Middlemore, and they say, oh, you know, because brown people are being treated uh, less well by by the, the, well, whoever it is. Now, the problem with that is, it, this is where you have to look into stuff, okay? Oh, okay, no, well, it was proven. So I get this a lot. No, no, it was proven. The, the, you know, the, the, the DHBs are racist. Are they? I mean, first off, then go from your own, go from your own interactions with nurses in there. Are they racist towards you? Are they, when we've gone to Middlemore, we've all been to Middlemore, you know, do they treat you like junk? Do they say, nah, you get over there or you sit over there because you're brown, then woo, don't steal from the vending machine, you know, all of that sort of stuff, <laughs> any sort of that thing. Uh, I have yet to come across anyone who's done that. Uh, so then when you look into it deeper, then you see, oh, well, it's coming from the management. Why is it coming from the management? Then they say, oh, no, no, we've got a study that shows it. What's the study? Oh, well, we, we, we basically gave a survey. Well, cool, I, I happen to actually go into that survey. And then I asked if I could actually observe a couple of them being done. They were very nice. They did allow me to, uh, and I did. You should see they they, they just they, they just rattle off a bunch of the numbers, and then they give a number or they they tick a box, and then they go from that. And that's where they, the management take it. The management interpret it. They want to how they interpret it. They give it out. So when the management say, so both the police and the the DHPs have done this. The management will say, yes, yeah, yeah, we've shown that we're racist, or that uh, the departments that we have are racist. That, that doesn't actually mean anything. You, you've, you've mm. gone in there, you haven't even done a self-survey, you've actually basically got in there and said uh, to people to, to mark it off the way they, they want to mark it off and, and put that element. But our, our day-to-day interest, I have yet to meet anyone who says that, yeah, I was treated in a racial manner. Even some of the ones who feel like they were treated badly, once you get down to it, uh, it's either because, you know, you've got a, a ED emergency department's full as, and they just want to shift people out. Mm. You know, it's not because you're brown, it's because I've got a whole bunch of other people in there who are desperate for a bed, and you're, you're okay. You, we can put you into outpatient or whatever mm. like that. This is where it becomes a bit of a... The whole ideas around racism is, is this, or institutional racism, because institutional racism mm. is the one, right? Mm. So let's have a look at it. Uh, uh, give me any policy which uh, basically is racist, whether it's an intention or, or whether it's an, an outcome. Do we, have, do we have one? So Jim Crow is a good example. Mm-hmm. In the US, uh, if you're black, you had to use the, the toilets and the taps in the back, right? Very blatant one. Apartheid, also another one. If you're black, then you had to go somewhere else. Do we have something like that in New Zealand? You, you mean like, like a policy? Like no, in, no, any, no? any law or policy? I couldn't say, I don't know any laws or policies. Because you're brown, so is there anything that you can't do that someone else can do because of anything to do with your skin colour or race or ethnicity? I don't believe so. I believe, like, if, no, there, are, if there are struggles, I feel like it would be my own perception of... I'm uh, anticipating being uncomfortable in a space if I choose to pursue this path, but I don't think that's a law or a rule or anything like that. It's sort of just in my own head and me making sense of that. So, uh, and I was going to ask, just to add on to this, do you think sometimes people are too quick to jump on the gun because they hear these terms like racism and all this sort of stuff and, yep. it, you know, it's the, the all these popular terms that are sort of mainstream and they're quick to label something that like that um, when yep. in fact it's... it's there's half there, of it. There's lots of little middle grounds that you could just label it as a bad experience or someone having a bad day or... There, there's just lots of different mm. variables, yep. inclu- but I feel like sometimes, and I don't know, I'm just putting it out there, but maybe, I don't know, are people quick to give something a label that it may not necessarily be the most fitting one? Yeah, mm. yeah. Th- that's half of it, and the other half mm. is uh, too scared. Because mm. if they say anything but, then they'll be mocked and then they'll be excluded. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. See that? Man, I can't think of anything. Well, this is an interesting and awesome talent and 
I look forward to all the comments <laughs> <laughs> so we can continue this dialogue. <laughs> so if you have any comments around, you know, some of the stuff that we're talking about, feel free to drop it, send it to Jay. Your <laughs> 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 message to Jay. My name is Michael. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Jay. Yeah. Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, oh, oh, well, if, if, the, if there's nothing in, in this day and age um, or in, in the modern era, mm-hmm. um, Elliot. Actually, there is. Is there? There is starting to be. So um, now, of course, you're starting to see some institutional racism. Uh, so I think it was like a three years ago, two years ago, that the DHB started to now prioritise Māori and Pacifica over anyone else uh, if they if a medical if a medical operation was to take place. So now my kids uh, will will be more likely to get a medical operation rather than a white person's kids. So it's not based and, on and oh, oh, so oh. priority. So, it's so they have a, well, they have a list of they have a list of considerations as to why they might put that. Uh, it, the DHBs have now put out a memo as of about two years, three years ago, uh, where if you're Maori or Pacifica, that will be added to your consideration. So if you've got uh, uh, if you've got a, a hip replacement for two people, same age, same whatever, everything's the same, same uh, postcode, whatever, the the white person will not get it uh, before the the brown person simply because that's the consideration now. Wow. So now there's a there's that extra consideration based off race. Uh, of course, you've also got uh, Tupuna Maunga authority. I can't stand that, that authority. I'll be honest because I I find them the oh. the Tupuna Maunga authority, which National brought in, uh, Christopher Lesson brought in the, this one, uh, and the Tupuna Maunga authority they get paid mega bucks, huge amount of money. Uh, they're the ones who you know the the mountains, the volcanic cones where we used to be able to all drive up there. My one, I, the manga I loved was always uh, Mount Wellington. Mm. But uh, they were the ones who, oh, Margaret, So Margaret, you know how Margaret used to be? You could just roll up there, yeah. sweet oh, ass. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, they've got their big fat grey arms mm. uh, and they also took off all the trees, heaps of the trees. Mm. Well, they, they, this is also the group who took off the cross of Mount Roskill, made sure it would never come oh. back on. Uh, and uh, so they also took off white people trees, specifically white people trees they took off. White uh, people trees? White people trees. All of the trees that came... Uh, uh, after uh, so Māori colonised cool uh, they, they had the past volcanic cones uh, then what you, within the various historical manner uh, then you had a whole bunch of trees on them so Mount Wellington had a bunch of pines and some other trees elms or whatever uh, so Tupa Māori Authority used helicopters and, and a whole bunch of things to, to rip out those trees and leave the other trees they put in big fat grey uh, um, barriers they took off the cross from Mount Roskill even though that was for, there for 60 years and is, is a beautiful mm. point for many of us. Um, and I've been in the meetings where they've basically said uh, things like uh, the white man brought uh, religion and that uh, brought our people down and low and things like that. I've been in the meetings as I've been saying this, and I can't believe it. But what I'm saying is that that is a group that is very specifically for Māori, not non- non-Māori, and yet it has been paid huge amount of money by everyone and so there's a there's a segregational aspect to that the people mm. on that board uh, will get be, be paid mega bucks wow how, how about thing then Could, since we're on the topic how about scholarships i'm just thinking about scholarships you know we, we, the scholarships are okay the fino, usually and, and, and the Pacifica, uh, yeah, I think. Mm, scholarships yeah, are usually okay and i'm just trying to think most of them okay because they come from the iwi themselves okay. so it's from the iwi themselves sweet is if if iwi's got the money and then uh, they, they want to uh, mm. give scholarships out, good on them. I think that's what it is. So I don't. I don't. I think that's okay. Um, mm. I haven't looked too deeply into those ones. Yeah, I, uh, I'm just thinking on the, on the part of like if you get um yeah, the the kiwis or the balangis. Oh, well, how come they're getting the scholarships? Why, why should I get all some, the some some do? Yeah, I've heard that, and I've been approached by some to yeah, say, oh, I'll yeah. take up the fight, and I said, well, no, because that's from the iwi themselves. It's not oh, from. Okay, cool. It's not from government. So that I don't know about all of them. So there's actually quite, there's a huge amount of scholarships that are out there. Well, not huge, but there's quite a few scholarships out there. Um, I don't know what it's like now, um, but when I was sort of working in that field, most of them were by iwi, and, cool. and that's fine. I think that's cool. In and fact, it, I, in fact yeah. I like that. I think that's really good. That's cool. And the only reason why I bring it, because I've heard some people, like some some people say, oh, well, how come, what, what about us? What about our, our culture? And all that kind of stuff. So, so, oh, so... I, I, I didn't think too much about it, but I think when you brought it up, so, well. I, I think there are scholarships out there from government, but I, I, I don't know whether they target base of race. Um, yeah, I can understand though if you socioeconomics or something like that. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, whatever. That's cool. I just thought I'd yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, no better to, um, to any of the brothers and sisters <laughs> who have scholarships. No, I've leveraged this. Oh, I, 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 no, no, but I think it's cool. But no, it's just that because I've heard some people say, "Oh, well, how come it's always for the Islanders and the Maldives? And I tell you which one I, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, and I actually go back and forth on this. But usually, I'm not against, I'm not with it too well. Is um, Mapper. So MAPA, MAPA is, uh, I think it's, I'm trying to think of the acronym meaning, but basically it's when, uh, um, uh, I think it's Māori and, or, or it's only Pacifica, or it's Māori and Pacifica. So basically for them to get into university, Auckland Univ- AU, and I think Otago has a equivalent, um, you get you, you only need less points. You need less points uh, than anyone else. And I, I go back and forth because I can understand uh, the, the, but what that's essentially saying is that brown people are not as inherently intelligent as anyone else, so they need to be given a hand up. Uh, it hasn't worked well overseas, so it's gotten through people through. And then they, when, they, when generally when they get to a certain element, they will fail, that and so the, the, the stats look mm. horrible afterwards. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then I then this conjecture, my conjecture only, then they feel like crap because they've gotten so high, then they failed so massively, mm. uh, and I can't help but feel that way. So I, I'm a bit. Back and forth on that, but overall, I don't like it. I think that um, fight hard, get into university, sweet. Yeah, you know, make so your way. Uh, I think that's the right way to go. Okay. Um, we'll see. Well, we've talked a lot about politics and certain issues, um, and and then I just want to go back to the beginning when, um, when we addressed you like you're, as a politician, but you just said, um, I I think. Five more has been a youth worker. Can you explain that? Because uh, I'm a youth mm. worker. <laughs> yeah, shout out to all the youth workers. Shout out to the OG youth worker. That, uh, well, uh, can I ask? Yeah. Have you have you gone to SWRB? Yes. Are, no, you, no, are you hooked? No, not yet. No, no, no. Yet. Good. I want to go through oh. section thirteen. Oh, yeah, I can. I don't want to study, but oof, I can. Yeah, see, I can. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that if you are a if you happen to be a youth worker from Torbay? mum and dad and all lovely life and mm. then you go to university for a few years and then you go back somehow you are actually going to be granted more respectability than a mum who's gone through 12 years of hell uh, uh, with a whole bunch of stuff and she has an understanding of youth that no one else or very yeah. few can match but the Torbay one will be held higher and they have better access to things than this one who will be given an honorary this one can apply for an honorary SWRB ranking this one will just have the higher one by far wow but, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> but <laughs> again, this goes back, eh? Mm, mm. All, all of these angle from that, you know? So I, that was something I was part of too. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, youth work, uh, um, you know, it, it, again, it's you know, the, the, the future. When we are old people, it will be the young people of today who will there be there to look after us, to protect us, or to send us down a, a quick train into hell. You know? Mm. It, it, these are the people who will... We... The, the, the country we're building now or preserving or not preserving is what we're leaving them and also their kids and their kids' kids. Uh, so, you know, when we talk about youth work, we, we're talking about legacy, destiny. Uh, I think that's the, the most powerful thing. And it's also great, you know, to, uh, to see someone who was, who their trajectory was, you know, self-harm, drug abuse, going off and then suicidality and then anger. Then if you can do something which, you know, gets them out of that funk, we all, as youth workers, we're all we're all pretty much like, oh no, it was you who did it. But you know, come on now, there's a little bit of a say. We're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's me, it's me, it's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you look at the profession, sorry, I'm going off track here, but because you know how they have these youth worker talks. But, um, <laughs> when you look at the profession in terms of all the other social services. We sort of looked at the as the bottom of the barrel service. Like, what? What do you? How do you? I think. Like, uh, well, well, I think. I think there is one. There's a social service which is looked at even lower than youth work. It's work with the elderly. Oh, never thought about that. Mm. Yeah, I think that gets looked look at much lower. Uh, they they struggle more. Uh, we at least look cool. Mm. You know, so the youth workers, we, we get we get bugger all. <laughs> you know, yeah. we, you know, it's not none of this sort of stuff. But uh, we get looked at as cool and go, oh, you know, when you're at parties, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's a, I think there's a, also a deeper level that they that people don't really want to talk about, uh, not not our people, but those people who look in on youth work. Mm. I mean, you look at Jaden Strubin, the Jaden Strubin case. I, I know a couple of the brothers who actually worked 
when that, that guy was a youngin, and they they told me, yeah, bro, that guy's, don't worry, he'll be on the news soon enough. You know, that's the, James Rubin? James Rubin's a guy who, um, west side, uh, um, he, he came out of jail for burglary, I think he was like 19 at the time, uh, went next door, uh, beat up and raped a old Chinese lady, and I think he even uh, sexually abused her even further when she was, Oh, dying. Uh, mm, he ended up uh, just going off to his girlfriends and stuff like that to stop head stopping her and all that sort of buzz. Um, there's a youth workers can uh, are also the hidden herald of what's coming up. So mm. you, you look at a lot of the young ones now, how because uh, some of the, the the boys are telling me that they've gone quiet, and, and a lot of the reason why they think it's gone quiet is because of the rise of organised crime. I think now what's going on is that uh, they're starting to be funneled into the organised elements because, of course, the age means they can't get done for too much, but they can be used and, and organised so to be more soldiers. Um, and so when you talk about youth work, uh, we are, in a sense, the herald of what's of what's coming up. Um, I think youth work is... See, it's interesting, yeah, youth work, social work. Jeez, that's a whole other topic. Let's again. go, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him. <laughs> See, social work, I, I, that's why I never describe myself as a social worker. One, of course, is... is uh, <laughs> okay, culturally speaking, youth work is much more preferable. <laughs> you just... Because you, you're, you're in a street more, you know. Social workers generally don't sit there on the corner while a young person's mm. got the knife right to them going, fuck this shit, I don't mm. understand. You know, that, that's not them. The social worker's the one who uh, clocks in, does the work, gets the... Uh, uh, FGCs and, and sorts all this out, maybe does some visits or something like that, and then they're off to the new next case in six, seven months where the youth worker, the impartation is much deeper, the the transferal is, is inescapable, the, there's a lot of, uh, your life goes in it and out of it, you know, you, you, well, you, are, you look, mm-hmm. you know, um, the, the, the pain is, is a bit more real, it's obvious, It's and therefore the ability to bring them out of that is also uh, there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, no, no, youth work's awesome, very fulfilling, all mm. all that good stuff. Oh. But uh, you, you know, the 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 failures, well, even failure is the wrong word. Failure is not the right word for a youth worker to have. But uh, the ones which we lost, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they yeah, stay with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shop, bro. Mm. Uh, it's cool because um, sometimes youth work don't get the credit that they should, and just hearing your insight around it makes me. Proud, and I know these heaps of youth workers out there and aspiring youth workers keep on doing the mahi. Uh, yeah. the, the, you guys are absolute heroes. You know, I, I do. I think that uh, you risk more than a social worker. And all the yeah, all the peeps out there, they, they risk more than social workers. No no offence at all to the social workers. They they have an important part to play and they do most of them do a really good job as they can. Youth workers are the ones who get paid bugger all and they are out on those streets uh shining their light out for others to be able to see it and and they risk so much more uh, so you i mean i'm off the tools you know mm. you're the one that's on the tool so i think that's uh, uh, just awesome just awesome yeah so mm. yeah, obviously we all know what's happened um the last few weeks or few uh, last week with bp um alan Vaar. um and mm. so obviously he's one of you know just a legend within our community. Um, yeah. So just going back to what you were saying early on, Elliot, with uh, the fatherless, uh, a lot of our, our, our young men who are kind of becoming prospects for gang members and all that kind of stuff and all the hardship and all that, and, and being in youth work. Um, how do we, or how do you see, how, what are your thoughts on trying to combat that, uh, our, our young people in terms of, getting lost with all the system and and not knowing and not educating themselves or not being aware of what's happening uh, around them. You mean you mean the young men who are oh, oh yeah young, young 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 men who are probably seen by 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 youth workers and and so forth that are forced that youth workers are, are working alongside what what do you think um, needs to take place? Well for them themselves it's uh, if we want to fix a situation it there's programs that they can be a part of. That part's okay. But the if you want to look at the core issue, it's the value of family itself. We don't value family. We don't value the family unit. If we want the other stuff is fine. That that's why I went, that's why in a sense I segued a little bit from youth work to politics. Mm. 
we can't fix the big issues here. You can fix all the, mm. you can fix all the the, the bits of the tree. Mm. You know, oh, oh no, you know, there's a peach there. Well, let's fix up the peach. Sweet as, you're not going to actually fix anything deeply unless you go to the roots and, and look at the nutrients in the soil, the root system itself, try to protect the branch, the trunk, wh whatever is dealing with it. As you back up, that's where you need to find, and that's why, I mean, that's, that's why youth work led to politics, because mm. our families are being deconstructed by what's happening in Wellington. Mm. That's why. As, as a youth worker, I can I can fix this one. You give this one to me, give me a time span, sweet, give me yeah. a team, we can do it. Well, that one's been done. These ones are over here. Uh, what we need to look at is is why has the family, why is the family breaking down? And when you look at that, you, um, I do. I blame Wellington mostly. Y yes, I can hold. Hey, man, you need to get back to church, and you need all those, all that sort of stuff. But if you've got uh, if you've got policies, which mean that the, the warehouses in Woody will start shutting down and moving off to something else, then you've shut down the ability for them to put food on the table. You shut down the food for them to uh, put food on the table, then the government comes along here. I'll give you this much money. Bugger all, but hey, hey, it'll keep us fed for another week. Golden hook. And then suddenly you've got you got all the the issues and the problem mm. going on in the family, the family dysfunction itself, and suddenly uh, uh, someone can decide. You know what? Get I can get more money. Without you here, then with you, uh, it's a twisted form of, of value that we have uh, in this. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll say what Thomas Sowell said: the Bellac family has survived centuries of slavery, generations of Jim Crow, but has disintegrated in the wake of the liberals' expansion of the welfare state. The policies coming from Wellington break down our families. When the families break down, our kids break down. Mm. Wow. Would you say? Would you say that's deliberate, um, Elliot? Uh, I see in the US it, it appears to be more vote based, as in Lyndon Bain Johnson was the guy who started the whole uh, welfare, the, sorry, the expansion of the welfare state. Um, and, and when he did that, he said, I'll have those niggers voting Democrat for 200 years. That's what he stated. And then he went into the whole, that's when he expanded the state welfare from that. That was in the 60s. Uh, I don't think it was on purpose. But that's just my thoughts. It just mm. doesn't strike. I can't. Mm. I struggle to think of shadowy characters behind us. You know, oh, let's <laughs> get these brown people. You know, I just don't think that's the case. I've heard all of them say, "Oh, yeah, man, brown people." You know, the Treaty of White Tongue was, was brown was white people's supremacy. All that sort of nonsense. I I can't see it. The the evidence is not really there. But I think what it was was they did pick it up at some point, and that's why again I've turned away from Labour. Is that Labour? Labour are happy to use it. They're happy to use the narrative. That's my problem. Mm. Um, that's I think that's what I would say. I don't think it was done on purpose. I think when Labour found out about it, oh, great narrative, mm. great narrative. Mm. Oh, we love you, brown people. We're here for you. We'll help you. Oh, minimum wage. Let's get it up there. That'll help you. Mm. Economics says it doesn't, but hey, don't listen to economics. Don't listen to science. Listen to our science. Yeah. You know? Excuse the show. <laughs> no, no, no. Just <laughs> yeah, so much to um, digest and keep on dialoguing. But um, I know we're like really think for time. Um, oh, I'm wary about time. But one thing I need to ask you before we, you know, wrap it up is the hat, bro. <laughs> 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 Trump. Yeah, Trump. A lot of people find that offensive. offensive. A lot of people of find that controversial. <laughs> Um, yeah, explain to us your is it just a cool hat or your Trump oh, supporter? So cool. or? I, I think I, <laughs> <laughs> how can we get one? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. 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 Uh, well, I would say, uh, do you think that uh, Russia would have invaded Ukraine and do you think China would have been taking over the Solomon Islands and all these other ones if Trump was still in office? Probably, mm. Probably not. not. Mm. In fact, he didn't. Mm. You found that China and also Russia did not engage in expansion plans during Trump's uh, administration. They were scared of him, mm. you know, because they thought, oh, shucks, this guy could actually push the button. Yeah, shucks, he could have. Uh, he was also the only guy to bring in uh, to bring in North Korea for discussions, proper discussions with him in uh, South Korea. He was also the guy who brought down, uh, what was it? It was either highest employment or lowest unemployment for, for the black and the brown, mm. so the Hispanics and the black Americans. Uh, he was a guy who kicked out the most sexual uh, sex offenders 
in US mm. history. No wow. other US president has kicked out more sex offenders than he has. Um, and he's, he has started less. In fact, I don't think he started any wars, and he even actually shut down a couple of uh, conflicts while he was in wow. office. So I think, uh, oh, and also for anyone who 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 is also Christian, he was the, he was the one who defended uh, the baby. So he's actually shut down or defunded quite a lot of the, the Planned Parenthoods, which were just offering babies in the millions. Uh, just wow. an incredible amount. Uh, as, but so he and he stated in state of union that babies were born in the image of God, and we should be looking after them. You know, wow. <laughs> you know. Uh, so so I, I really like him. Sometimes I wish his Twitter was uh, shut down, mm-hmm. <laughs> bro. Why do you? Oh gosh, why? You? But uh, facts, policy wise, mm. mm, beautiful. Uh, you know, excellent plan. Looked after Americans a lot. You know, and, and he really did. Mm. Um, but you know, so why do we? Because you know, we can sort of um, relate that to New Zealand politics in terms of like, why do people hate them so much? Is it the media, what they want to portray, or yep. and yep. they'll be the same for New Zealand politics? Or are we heading that way? Uh, so, so media quite uh, fascinating uh, for for the Trump aspect. Yes, it's, it's pretty much media. Um, you, I, I remember seeing something about him saying, "Oh, he said neo Nazis." Like he's he was apparently supporting neo Nazis at the at the rally where some uh, someone died, um, and it was quite fascinating because in, it was the whole debunking thing going. Uh, run the video for maybe three more sentences, and then he says, "Not the neo Nazis. They need to be condemned in the highest fashion." But on both sides, there were normal people there. I'm not talking about the white supremacists or the neo Nazis. They need to be condemned and devout. And it's like, oh my gosh, he look across. He, he, it's one thing to know that the mainstream media engage in some propaganda sort of stuff. Mm. It's another thing to actually watch it being done right in front of you. Mm. It's fascinating. So in terms of the reason why New Zealanders don't like Trump, yeah, that's it. It's, it's pure, purely that. Don't forget, uh, New Zealand media, mainstream media also, uh, they syndicate. So they, they get a lot of the articles from CNN, MSNBC. Um, so they're very much the left. They will not they will not go from pretty much the only, one of the only right-wing stations or conservative stations, which is Fox or Daily Wire or something like that. They won't go to there. They'll only go to the to the left or moderately left uh, stations. In terms of what's happening here, I think it's quite fascinating. We had the report come out, what was a few weeks ago, uh, that uh, trust in the me- mainstream media is now in free fall, uh, over an 8%, uh, an 8% loss in the last couple of years alone, mm. uh, and now it's less than half the people in New Zealand trust the mainstream media, which I think is actually a good thing. Mm. Uh, I think that they've always been... I don't mind a little bit of a bias. I think it's natural. But... The last two years of COVID, the media have been absolutely complicit in a very much a funneling of just in the mania, you know, which the, the whole term that came up, uh, the one pm presses and and even the pictures where they have like uh, Ashley Bloomfield and, and Chris Hipkins and that, and they're in this movie theme, looking like that, you know, all the elements are in there for uh, uh, <laughs> just a theatricality of it. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the was the fifty five million dollar public mm. interest journalism fund. We've been we were asked if we would do that, and we had to say no. Uh, the the, the organisation that that I'm with, because the BSA, we would actually put ourselves under a, an industry mm. that could actually fine us and punish us wow. for speaking. For example, we quite proudly say there are two genders. We quite proudly say that family unit is important. We quite proudly say that equality is more important than equity. So we say those things, but uh, if we were putting under that, we would be punished We would be punished for it. Wow. wow. So, struggle, so, sorry guys. Uh, so what is your hope for, for our local community? And what is your hope for New Zealand? And for the future generation. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> and for the men. For, for the men. For the men. And for the men. I think I think a big one for the men is that we can start coming out of the shadows and joining together in groups that we need to and being proud to be men. I think that's a big one. In terms of our country, what I, I pray is that we pull ourselves away from the brink. Uh, we we are already in that throes of being of falling over. 
we we are indoctrinating our children we've got a bit of a grooming program with our children we that's even if they're lucky to survive abortion we've got uh job situations where you are now having to be woke or wokers to be able to engage in any type of work um and so what i'm hoping for is that the country ends up choosing a party or, or politicians rather who will fight for uh, freedom the the ideas of, of freedom and democracy uh, as for our local community, if I think about the Pacific community, I I don't know what it would take. I think that's probably the one the one area where I think I would ask, can you change? Can you change? Mm-hmm. Because I I haven't seen it. Uh, I want to see it. I see I see singles and and doubles here and there, sort of coming out from the the plantation, from the labour plantation. But overall, if, if our people tomorrow says, hey, do this, I'll do it. And and it's the only it's the only community. When I think about the local community, I think about Pacifica. And I had a, uh, I can't remember his name, but he was a Pacifica reporter who said to me, and he said it to me in a, in a slightly mocking way. He said, are you saying that Pacifica will only vote for Labour? I said, the vast majority will only vote for Labour. And he said it in a way that suggested that I was, you know, I was foolish and I was talking smack. You know, he's like, "What am I treating my people bad?" I was like, no. <laughs> "Look, look at the facts, look at the track record." I, I, I don't know what to say about our, our. I think it might maybe take. Um, I wonder if a lot of our people who vote Pacifica are uh, that older community who may align it with mm, going with the Faifial or. You know, th- there might actually be a religious aspect to it. I want. I wonder if that is. I might. I don't know, but I don't understand. I, I'll be honest. I don't understand the allegiance factor that crosses the Christian factor, wow. because that's the big one. Don't forget, mm-hmm. Labour is the most anti-Christian party we've ever had. We haven't had a more anti-Christian party, one that goes directly against mm-hmm. the values of Christian. But Pacifica, who very strongly are Christian, support. If Labour lost the Pacifica vote, oh man, you, the the rumblies will be incredible. But the Pacifica voters are choosing Labour over Christianity. Wow. Do you want to have any of the stats? What, what's the percentage of the Pacifica people? So the last the last stats that I looked at were were old, like about a decade, uh, and that was putting them about ninety four percent for Labour. Now, I don't know quite how they got those stats because my understanding is that it should be quite um, de-identified. Mm. But those are the last stats that I saw. And that was over a decade ago, but I can't... If you look at the areas and the voting... So Manurewa, good example. Uh, uh, Louisa Wall. She didn't mm. do anything for the people. Didn't do anything for the youth crime or jobs or work or transport or anything. Uh, instead, she focused on uh, transgenderism, gay marriage... Um, across the board, and so schools of Manirewa, they will generally they'll generally carry the transgender flag, right, or the LGBT flag. Uh, most of the schools are like that because of her influence. How's that helped in terms of youth crime, youth wave, family, mm. community support, or anything like that? It hasn't. It doesn't matter. And so, but when you look at the the fact that a lot of our Pacific people are there, and then it's Labour who gets in, that gives you a good indicator that our people are still doing what told. Ooh. Are you running in the next election? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> don't know. So is that confidential? Or? Oh, no, no, I mean, I, I, I have been approached, to be fair, but I, I don't know. I got an idea. If you don't, let's do a roadshow to help our Pacifica make a choice. I would love that. Mm. Yeah, Put out the I'll facts of each, each party, knowing what we're voting over policy rather than personality. Mm. And then give it back to the people so they're well informed because I think that's probably the danger that uh, <laughs> people have. That. That, yeah, well, <laughs> let's make oh, it happen. awesome that you, uh, you know, you say, yeah, hey. well, yeah. and get Betsy to run for a prime minister. <laughs> man, <laughs> day party. Yeah, we get the man here. We get the man here, man. <laughs> Elliot's here, man. So yeah, that's a, that's not a good. That's a that's a good idea. So next, you don't know, mind we give that's you a call a, tomorrow. That's a <laughs> 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 that's a, that is that's actually a great idea. Uh, that's a great idea. We, we we want our Pacifica people to be raised up, mm. uh, and if if that's what it takes, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for that. Cool. Mm. 
But oh man, it's just um, I don't know, I, I don't know. It's, it's something just about it, just kind of really um, alarming, Elliot. You know, and I think as as a pe- as a people, I know as a people, Pacifica people were quite prideful and quite can be quite stubborn at times. But I'm thinking that's quite alarming. But that's the percentage a decade ago, and um, I, I'm just I'm assuming that's probably gone decrease, but still the numbers might be, might be quite high. And I'm just thinking, Elliot, is it because of tradition? Because we're so traditionalist be, yeah. Yeah. that we just no nah, no nah, tradition we can't break tradition. It's just we just carry on labor no matter how bad it is. We just keep loyalty, you yeah, yeah, loyalty, yeah, yeah, loyal. like yeah. That village mentality, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. regardless of the the facts are right there, staring us in the in the, in the face, and we're like, oh, nah, but we still are because we're mm. loyal to the, you know. Loyal to the bitter end. It makes sense, uh, and you know, yeah, loyalty collective. The that collective one's a big one. Mm. It's also why socialism can seem nice to us because mm-hmm. it's about oh, we're all putting in. It's not actually quite like that, but it sounds <laughs> like that, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I just think our people are just we're all blood back then. They so See how do we go? <laughs> but, but then again, but it just, it just goes to show, hey, hey brothers. Like you said early on, that hey, you gotta know, you gotta research, you gotta search for yourself, you gotta seek for yourself, you gotta understand for yourself and look it up. I think for too long, I think a lot of our people, a lot of and more so our men, are like, oh, yep, just yep, it sounds good. Mm. And without re- doing the research, doing the background re- research, and just say, okay, let's just, just, just go with what, it, what everyone else is, the majority is doing. Yep. Um, and not be afraid to say, oh, well, I was wrong. Mm. But um and mm. but yeah it's um it's, it's it's sad when I really think about it, it's quite sad that we just go okay the information is there the stats are there the facts are there and then we're still like nah I'll still yeah. choose that anyway mm. uh, without doing anything without even looking at it what's the what's the real agenda behind everything you know because even if you go in blind which I've done many times um, <laughs> inky pinky no, I, <laughs> 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 but I just think about the the messages that I would hear in the media. Um, if I'm not going out proactively researching the policies and the values behind them, when I get to the voting, it's who have I heard yeah. of? Who, mm. Whose messages are yep. playing yep. more in the mainstream media and that I hear if about? If you're going to yeah. waste your vote, yeah. like go with the ones that yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, here's a, here's a good one. He's a bit controversial. I, I like Efeso. Like I've spoken with him quite a few times. Nice guy. But <laughs> again, he works for the party who has been actively going against our faith, going against our families, and has kept us on the bottom pile for so long and refuses to fix our areas. Wow. Hey, and we have, we've had him, if you saw, well, we haven't had him in the studio, but we've had him on, on, online on Zoom. And so, yeah, he... Um, now get him yeah, on. Yeah, but I said he'd come on. He'd uh, come on. Yeah, right, no, yeah we'll, we'll, we will do that because Ronji called him out as well. Mm. And so, oh, we also, I think, <laughs> I, I, think he, I think he called him out off air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fish. Hey, also, we got love for you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah we, love, we love you. Also. Um, but, um, yeah, it'd be cool. Eh? Uh, yeah, hard on. And I think what P said is, uh, is there's a concern and and it's quite sad. But then also, if you just tell another. I think the challenge is is for us to mobilize our our people, mm. community, and also hold those accountable. Yeah. Uh, for not only for the vote, but for those who we put in place, mm. because yeah, we're giving them too much freedom. <laughs> you guys are getting paid the big bucks. Well, they are. Uh, yeah, and 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 we need people in there that would. I guess fight for our communities, fight mm. for our rights, and this is the time to do it. Like, mm. if anything, like now, like I, I, I was dismissing the whole I was like, yeah, no one. I wasn't really thinking about it, but now after this time, I was like, shucks. We need to, <laughs> we need to do something about it. We need mm. to refine, unlock, <laughs> take charge. Take charge. <laughs> hey, yeah, what man, do you reckon? We, we need to inform our people. They yeah, need to be well informed. Before they make any decisions, mm. but I, I don't believe that they are being well informed. Mm. So um, yeah, I think we can make it happen. Mm. We'll get a panel of you guys and just bring the gloves and just yeah, and, <laughs> no, that's good. and just and just and have a good talk, a good conversation. Well, and, and, and Charlie actually said uh, something real powerful, which was a uh, um, yeah, this is actually the best time because you've got local elections coming up, mm. and then you know next year you've got the big ones. And again, you, you need to have a think about, well, oh, okay, great. Because I'll tell you what, North Shore is awesome. 
They've got their beautiful jungle gyms going on and they've got their lovely centres that are moved in. They've got their concreted areas are making so many different improvements. So they are being looked after. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we still got the creek, so hey. We got the creek. But we can't blame that on colonisation. <laughs> white man, the white oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, hey, we could go on for for, for hours. Like, <laughs> I mean, we can. I think could, you know, obviously with politics and obviously with all the other other issues that are underlying issues that, uh, within our community, more so in our nation, but more so in terms of our men. Uh, but it's just been rich. I mean, it's been rich information, rich education as well, and so a lot of things that are, we as as um, as, a, as a group of men or band of brothers um, just we need to talk about. It. We need to really um, educate ourselves around um, in terms of more so in, in terms of politics. Um, because uh, I think I can guarantee a lot of our oh, politics. I don't really need to. That's for that's that's for the politicians. Mm. Uh, but I think tonight, I think a lot of us is, um, who maybe watching this, going, "Oh, I need to school up on this, man. I really, mm. I really just you know, if if things are changing, I want to know what's changing, and I don't know what's what's happening with all the, uh, these bills that have come, you know, during COVID, all that kind of stuff. Like, mm. I don't want to know what's happening. And so, if anything, what you've what you've brought to the table has been really rich, really rich, um, also. Uh, and, and admire your, your your boldness and your courage to stand up, even in the midst of uh, adversity and even going against the grain, bro, man. Kudos to you, so well done. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah I and Charles, so I, I've just met you today. Probably crossed paths before through the <laughs> <Yeah, but laughs> today. I've really uh, um, been honoured to sit with you and just have this Taranoa and a lot of the what's been discussed has challenged a lot of my uh, thinking and some stuff that I've been said in and um, I guess my just my chance to go back and really um, look deeper into why I think the way I think and challenge some of those thought processes but um, and also just come up with my own mm. my own ideas and mm. and but one thing for sure is that I am encouraged and challenged to really um do what we can for community while we still can and um, it's not too late and I just want to honour you and yeah. one thing that I've really got out of um, Atala Noa is who you are, what you stand for um, and yeah, your identity and what you feel that you're mandated to do and just want to keep on encouraging you to be who you are. Um, never fold. We learned that from um, our brothers a couple of weeks ago. They talked about not folding and um yeah, just bless you, brother, mm. and we just pray all the best for you. I love also. Yeah. Oh, Jay, you want to say something? Nah, I just wanted to thank you for your time <laughs> and like just similar to Charles, like it's just been mm. like I've just been analyzing myself and and the things, and I'm I'm pretty open about like the things I'm naive about and my shortcomings, and so it's cool to hear different perspectives from. Let's say what I'm being taught. Says <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> What you're being colonized. <laughs> and um yeah, no, it's just it's just interesting to like I'm just having this mental battle of like I've literally got assignments due in tomorrow that are about <laughs> around <laughs> colonization <laughs> and Maori leadership during World War One and all that sort of stuff and the hardship. And then hearing this other perspective, um, yeah, I just think we need different voices. We need different lenses and perspectives to view our world. Um, and so I'm just grateful that um, you've been able to share some of your insight with us. Um, and, and I've definitely taken it to heart. So, yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Aro, aro, lava. Hey, also, um, just before we uh, kind of shut shop, is there, is there anyone that you think or any, any person that you think would be ideal to come on the, the podcast? Um, Elliot. Well, actually, I do. I think Efeso. Yeah, I think Efeso is uh, probably a good one. I mean, he, he and I would be, uh, we would be joined in, in our love for Pacific and, and desire for them to be raised. We would be strongly opposed in terms of our ideological viewpoints. I'm conservative. Mm. He is. I think he's actually more conservative than he thinks. Mm. But uh, but he he belongs to a party who are totally opposed to that. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be great. But uh, yeah, no, no. But I loved it. Uh, absolutely, my honour to be here tonight. I'm, I'm so so blessed that I was able to be here amongst you guys. But uh, you know, I, I do. I believe that the mandate mantra is really powerful. Uh, you know, refine, unlock, take charge. Absolutely powerful. Uh, awesome, awesome. Hey, and we need to have you back. <laughs> we need to get you back. There's, there's so much I wanted to talk about, but 
because of time's sake, we, yeah, uh, but there's so much that we could keep going on in terms of the conversation. But also, hey, this is for you, every guest that comes oh. on. Every guest that comes up, we give them a, a bit of a sketch, a bit of a caricature. Oh, so, woo, a caricature. So, yeah, so, so also which which other side is it? <laughs> <laughs> I should have done you for hat, but you know, it's all right. <laughs> for hat, it's for you. So. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, far out. Oh, my gosh. Bless you, man, Elliot. Oh, Thank man. you so much, oh. also. Right here, man, we are. Beautiful. Thank you so much. No, gosh, man, I appreciate that. Thank eh? you. Thank, Thank you, you. So, and again to our viewers, there's so much in there. So, uh, comment on our IG, Facebook, uh, be nice uh, <laughs> on our YouTube, and uh, send us your feedback because um, we really want to sort of, um, yeah, keep these dialogues going. The support of our people, a part of our men. And uh, we want to keep on pushing the envelope. So remember, we're the podcast for the people, by the people. Awesome. So, thank you. That was our last episode for. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh. oh, awesome. Awesome. Mandate. <laughs>